Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the PL300 exam preparation series where we are having a look at the second learning path model the data. In this video, we are going to cover the topic create semi-additive measures which is part of the section create model calculations by using DAX. Before I actually go and explain what are semi-additive measures, let's look at a very simple scenario so that the basic understanding of semi-additive measures can be made. So here we have a visualization with the date column and the total quantity measure that we have computed in one of the earlier videos and the daily quantity sold can be seen here in this in this table. In this particular visual, the only thing that has changed is that instead of the date, the date of the calendar, the date column of the calendar, I have pulled in the start of the month, which actually represents the month here. So here it means that the month of January 1997, then the month of February 1997 and the month of March 1997. And then here again, we have the same total quantity measure. And you can see that now the aggregation that is being shown here is at a monthly level. So you can say that, okay, this is the number that represents the total quantity sold for January 97. Then this is the number that shows the total quantity sold for February 97 and so on and so forth for the entire data set. So here for a moment, if you just visualize that instead of the total quantity, if in our data set, we had a field that showed the inventory balance or maybe a bank balance, something that is uh, there in your data set that cannot be accumulated. So if you have an inventory balance, you would never say that, okay, this is my daily inventory balance, but that inventory balance is never going to translate into an aggregation at the monthly level. Similarly, your bank balance on every day of day of the month or any balance in your, in your account cannot translate to an accumulated value for the entire month. So accumulation here, although logically it is possible, it is, math sorry, mathematically it is possible, but logically it does not make any sense. So semi-additive measures are those measures which actually are used to take care of certain scenarios where the where the granularity at the date level you want to preserve and you do not want an aggregation at the month level or the week level or or at a year level even if you want to pull the measure in another in a visual that has a different granularity so this is how we define the semi additive measures although we do not have any column in our data set which represents an inventory balance or something like that but we are going to use the same total quantity column to actually see what is a semi-additive measure. So here I have created a new measure by the name total quantity semi-additive and it uses the same pattern that we have seen earlier in some of the time intelligence measures and the function that actually enables this functionality is this first date function. So there is a first date function and there is a last date function. And all we are doing is that we are using the same total quantity because I said that we do not have any inventory balance or any uh, bank balance or something like that. So we are using the same total quantity measure here. And then we are using the first date DAX function. And inside the DAX function, this uh, first date DAX, DAX function, I'm just passing the date. Now I'm going to pull this measure first in the table which has the date on a daily granularity and then in this visual that has the date at a monthly granularity and let's see what is the result that we see. So let's first have a look at this table where we have the date on a daily granularity and you can see that the result of total quantity and total quantity semi additive are exactly the same. You have you are getting the same values for all the dates. But if I come here on this particular table, in this particular visual where I have pulled in the total quantity semi-additive, now we do not see the same aggregated effect here. So here we are just seeing the value 348, which is the value for the first date, which is 1st of January 1997, first date of January 1997. Then here I am seeing 404, which is the value that you see for the month of 
February, 1st February 1997. So here we are only seeing the results without aggregation and we are just seeing the value which is there on the first date. Similarly, there is a function last date that we can use and here the, the essence is that if we have some kind of a balance and we want to see a balance at a different granularity, then it is going to show you the value which was on the last date or the first date of that month. So this kind of a measure is called as a semi-additive measure and this is a very simple pattern that you need to keep in mind. So here I'm on the dax.guide website and I can see that this is the definition of the first date tax function which says that it returns the first non-blank date. Similarly for the last date this is just going to return the last non-blank date and you just need to pass the date value here. So this is how the, the first date and the last date functions are used inside of semi-additive measures and these are a special category of you can say time intelligence functions uh, that are just uh, useful for creating the semi-additive measure. So this was all about the semi-additive measures and this is all about for this topic and I will catch you up in the next video.